Welcome back to the Super Light Coupe build. In this video, we are going to fabricate the cooling tubes. Uh, but before we get started, I did want to give a shout out to my friend Alfonso. He is uh, building from scratch a uh, Mercedes Gullwing. So he's literally uh, fabricating the whole body and placing that body on a Corvette chassis. And it is an amazing build. Uh, the guy is very talented. Uh, he lives uh, up in Connecticut and he's far more entertaining than me. I really enjoy his videos, so check it out. Uh, just uh, search for East Coast Goings and you will find Alfonso's build. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, well in a prior video, we mocked up these tubes to get the general shape out of PVC. Now I'm taking the stainless tubes that were included in the kit and coming up with an approach to mount them on the chassis and uh, you know and so forth. Uh, basically Superlight provides the tubes, they do not provide the clamps. You know builders come up with various ways they like to attach these tubes. Some attach them to the to the frame rail off the side, others mount them you know like I'm going to on the floor pan uh, my approach here is, you know, I, I built these little platforms and I'm doubling up on the silicone P-clamps because I want to have equi, uh, equi force holding it down on both sides so it sort of doesn't flap and, and weaken that clamp. The other thing is uh, it leaves room for insulation because the, the water traveling through these tubes is over 200 degrees. And that'll make it really toasty in the super light coupe. So we need some room around the tube to come up with some high R value uh, insulation on the tubes. The other thing is uh, the way I'm thinking of attaching this is I will attach it from underneath. So I will thread some holes in the aluminum block and then attach uh, the base of the clamp from underneath the car. Uh, that way, if I ever have to remove these tubes, I'll be able to do that. I'll unscrew them from the bottom. I'll probably need some cutting involved because I, I want to make these tubes solid. Uh, but I could always, you know, put them back uh, if necessary. Hopefully, I'll never have to do that, but I didn't want to make those clamps inaccessible. Okay, so that's it for the, for the uh, long tubes. Uh, let's walk over to the uh, work table here and you know I basically made mini standoffs for the tubes that go in the front and the reason for this you know you need to provide a little bit of air and room for the uh, insulation on the pipes and also the brake lines run behind this so you have to have to allow for a little bit of room uh, the factory recommends somewhere between 10 and 20 uh, millimeter standoff. I'm choosing 10 to keep these pipes tucked in, you know, tucked in pretty well. Okay, so that's about uh, what it looks like. And, and the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, I've come up with the location of where I'm going to mount those brackets. And I'll drill holes and I'll thread those uh, P clamps with the standoffs into the chassis. So I just used my micrometer, uh, figured out where I needed to center the holes, and, and now I'm going to, you know, drill those holes and mount the clamps on the chassis. That way I can start to place the, uh, you know, place the uh, tubes and start to uh, figure out where the elbows go. Okay, so stay tuned. Okay, well here's a little work in process. Every time I drill a hole in the chassis, I hold my breath, and I just hope, I just hope my uh, my measurements are exact. But anyway, here's the end result. So I wanted this to be a smidge, you know, maybe a tenth of an inch above the bottom of the chassis, and that leaves plenty of room to clear to clear the lower control arms, get the cooling tubes, and also with the standoff, it gets the cooling tube 
away from the foot box so dissipate some heat so I think we're good so I'm gonna duplicate these brackets uh, on the left side and the front side of the car and we'll start to hang the uh, metal tubes okay I think this is a good spot to pick up some of the work in process we've got all the three holes drilled so there's one there's two with the clamp installed and there's three and all in all it came out I mean it looks great I mean I'm happy the placement of the pipes yeah you know, with the shock on I got a little little room here at full droop I've got a half an inch to put some insulation on the side of the body and around the tube and then uh, you know the clamps are just above above the floor so hopefully they won't get too much abuse uh, when the car is on the road uh, let's see the one uh, mistake I made uh, I placed this clamp here I should have moved it over a bit because I was going to use uh, a small 45 degree elbow and it turns out the seam of the straight pipe and the elbow will be right under the clamp which you know I didn't want I didn't think that would be good so uh, I had a couple of these larger mandrel bends laying around for some other purpose uh, so I'm going to use those and, and actually it comes out better because there's just fewer seams but anyway it, you know really does look good uh, this the next step now I'm trying to connect this front section to the side section and I sort of have an S with a 90 degree and a 45 degree uh, so it clears you know the corner of the frame uh, if I keep the pipe uh, with the 3 8 inch standoff, it sort of just comes in contact or is a, just a hair away from the corner. And with the vibration of the car, it's probably going to tap. Also, there's no room for any insulation. So I figured I'd snake it around this area and it'll be good. Uh, let's see. So I want to fit, you know, I want to make this a, a solid a welded up piece so I'm using the PVC to fit the sections and then once I get this exactly fitted the exact size uh, then I'll use my uh, circular saw and cut the stainless steel I'll cut it a little oversized and then use the mill to to trim it down to the exact you know the exact length uh, my circular saw really just doesn't cut super straight so I always got to clean those cuts up but anyway, it's looking good, so I'm going to make that out of stainless steel, and then we will move on. Okay, well, we're downstairs at the Joel K. workshop, and the workbench is back to its natural state. She's looking good, but anyway, the reason why we're down here, instead of using the circular saw, I picked up this pipe cutter from Harbor Freight. That was like 12 or 13 bucks. And this really does a nice job on these stainless steel tubes. So, you know, you get a nice crisp cut and, you know, it's just easier to control than that circular saw. And, you know, the, the pipe really dulls the blade and generate a lot of heat. It was literally melting the pipe when I was cutting it. So this works out a lot better. Okay, we're back in the workshop and I'm cutting one of the uh, side tubes. And I did learn something with this pipe cutter. I mean, I've never used one of these before, but it's easy to sort of put a lot of pressure and crank on that handle. But if you crank it too much and then, you know, you sort of spin the blade around, you wind up pinching, pinching the end of the tube. So then that creates more work and you've got to grind that tube down and make it, you know, to make it level. Uh, so what I do is I literally just just feel a little pressure and then I go then I go around you know around with the the pipe cutter a bunch of times and that'll give me a nice clean cut and you know it won't look pinched and I won't have to clean the end up okay so anyway just figured I'd share that tip with everybody okay, well, there's the finished product I mean you know, it's not bent at all on the side. You know, it's got a, a little bit of a, a little bit of an angle there, but I tend to take that down with the mill. But you could use an angle grinder. 
but no pinching at all. Beautiful. Okay, well here's a uh, work in process. I think this will be the next to last segment. Uh, you can see that, you know, the tubes are, the tubes are really done at this point. And I will say, uh, you know, this was uh, painstakingly a lot of work. I have at least 20 hours in to carefully cut these pipes and, and fit all these angles together. Uh, you can see the side tubes with those standoffs. The standoffs raise that pipe up to a half an inch, so we're up a half an inch so I can get some insulation in there. You've got the combination of the 90 degree and 45 degree to create a, a nice size gap against the front corner of the chassis so you can get insulation on the pipe there. And you can see the, you know, I don't have tape around all the pipes and you can see that they just butt up together. So, you know, all the effort really paid off and, and I think it looks great. Uh, the pipe snakes around here, it tucks into the front compartment. And then in the front compartment, you know, I picked up this 45 degree silicone elbow and decided that's the way I will, you know, I'll attach the uh, piping to the radiator. Then I have another standoff on the inside of the front compartment. Now, there's sort of one problem here, which is if I weld up all these tubes as is, you know, the tubes are rigid, right? There's really no bend. And if I want to take this silicone elbow off, I literally have to slice it up and take it out. And then putting a new one in, you know, you sort of soap up the, the metal to get it slippery and you push it down there and then you leave a gap and you, you snake it back up. The other thing is I, I just sort of, you know, in the back of my mind, you know, not that I'll ever want to remove these from the car, but you, if you want to remove these from the car, you're going to have to take the body off which is something I don't want to do. Uh, so I'm going to make an executive decision here, make a design change. So I, I cut up a piece of steel tube and it's got the, the bead on the end to, to seal in the silicone elbow. And I'm going to put a pair of these right in this location here. So that way I can put the front tubes on independent of the rear tubes and then the rear tubes I can unbolt from the bottom of the car and I'll, I'll be able to pull them out from the side of the body. So that gives me a little peace of mind that this is a bit more serviceable than if I just welded up uh, you know, a single long tube. Okay, and that's all in theory, but I'm gonna get to work and then we'll segue over to the final segment. Okay, this will be the final segment of the video. So a couple hours later, I basically uh, replaced that solid piece of tube with two end tubes. And that way I'll put a silicone coupler in the line here. And you know, it solves a couple problems. I mean, I, I could technically uncouple that and then actually pull this side pipe out from the back. That's sort of the idea uh, behind it. I left enough room that I could tilt it and then pull it, pull it out the back of the car. Uh, also, it gives you a little more leeway and gives you a little more tolerance because when I, when I weld this whole thing up, I mean, you know, sometimes it, you think it's gonna weld perfectly, but, but it, it may skew a little bit. So, It'll be easier to weld up the front set of tubes and then the rear set of tubes. So I, I think I sort of like, like what I did. Here's just sort of a look around. A couple different angles. It looks clean. I like all the 45 degree angles. Uh, 45 degree angles are better for, for head pressure. And this is the, the other side. It's a little dark there, but I use a four inch coupling hose. And that'll do the job. Here's the, uh, the driver's side, the same thing on the driver's side. And then it goes up at a 45 degree angle. I needed some room back here for the air filter and I also use standoffs against the frame. So everywhere the tube touches the car, there'll be a standoff so I can put some insulation.
Okay, so I think we'll call it a wrap. Uh, we'll sort of end with a, sort of a far shot of the super light coupe chassis, okay? Well, as always, thanks for watching and take care.